I've been connected to the University of Michigan football program as a player, a fan, a donor, and a regent of the university for the better part of the last 40 years. During those many years, football has never been involved in any situation where we have been the subject of investigations and or rule violations of this nature. Nor has our head coach, Rich Rodriguez, in his 25 plus years of coaching. This is a tough day. We must first and foremost take full responsibility for those events that brought us to this point, and we do. We will dedicate ourselves to learning from this and doing everything we can to prevent it from happening in the future. The NCA allegation has revealed areas where we need to improve, countable coaching limits and playing and practice season rules, along with the monitoring of these two areas. Regarding coaching limits, the allegation is that non-University of Michigan coaching staff, and from this point forward I'm going to refer to them as our quality control staff, because that's the internal title. They engaged in prohibited coaching behaviors. Now these quality control staff members have a very narrowly defined role in terms of the support they give our coaches and the role that they play in the program relative to our coaches and our players. And as such, they may not engage in what's referred to as skill development or give advice to players during stretching and warm up activities or while players are watching game or practice film. Also, at the time of these allegations, NCAA rules prevented the quality control staff from sitting in on coaches' meetings. So we were wrong in instances where this occurred. Since that time, it should be known that the NCAA has changed this rule, and it now allows quality control staff to sit in on coaches' meetings. But we clearly made mistakes in these areas, and we have already taken action prevent any of those mistakes from being repeated. Under the playing and practice season rule, there is also an allegation that we exceeded the permissible practice hours during some weeks at various points in the year. Again, you will see the specifics detailed in the notice, but here is a top level perspective. In some out of season practices where there are alleged overages, the overage is approximately two hours in a week. During the season on some Sundays, the allegation is that the University of Michigan exceeded the daily permissible practice time by less than an hour. In a single instance, the allegation is that an overage caused the team to exceed its 20-hour weekly permissible limit by 20 minutes. I have looked into these permissible practice hours issues, and I want to emphasize something that is very important. There were no, and I repeat, I repeat no, situations where any student athlete's welfare was put at risk, and any characterizations to that effect would be inaccurate. Based on my understanding of this situation, I believe a significant reason for the alleged overages is a result of internal confusion over which activities were countable and which were not. We had a lack of clarity around whether time spent in stretching and warm-up activities were countable minutes, and this represents a significant portion of the discrepancies between the NCAA findings and our practice routines. Now, two of the NCAA allegations relate to how the institution and the coach monitored those two areas of concern. That said, and this is very important, there was no charge of loss of institutional control, none whatsoever. I want to address one other allegation and accept full responsibility for the fact that we made a mistake. During the summer, the coaching staff was found at times to be disciplining some students who had unexcused absences from class by requiring special conditioning drills. Reprimanding students in this manner during the season is an age-old practice of which I can personally testify. Uh, coaches do have consequences for players who cut class, and that's a very normal situation. However, NCAA rules make it very clear that that is not permissible during the summer months. And in that particular case, we made a mistake. Here are the next steps. 
We will spend time carefully reviewing all of the allegations and determining how they match up with our own internal investigation that was conducted in tandem with the NCAA. If there are any instances where details of some allegations do not match, we will provide that information as part of our responsive materials to the NCAA. In addition, the NCAA has requested some additional information, as you will see in the notice. We understand that these requests are quite standard, and we will prepare those responses as well. During this review period, we will also consider and implement any sanctions we choose to self-impose. We will now begin to prepare a response to the NCAA, and we anticipate a hearing before the NCAA Committee on Infractions coming this coming August. As the incoming athletic director, I want to make clear that no accusation against our program is trivial. We take this report very seriously, and we will learn from it, and we will get better. Leadership has always been the foundation of our program, and will and it will continue to be in the future.